She was really gorgeous. She was just adorable. The pictures are so cute. And so uh, Inga, he helped them pay the money to bring Francis, uh, Josephine, my dad, who was in Salvador, by the way, I'll tell you that later. And uh, Seal. And so, and the mama, and of course the mother. And so when they came, uh, Francis met George and said, yeah. And she's telling us this story. She said, I didn't like it. <laughs> Something happened. She changed her mind at 11 children later. <laughs> Well, tell us about Josephine. Uh, my mother was Josephine, Giuseppe. And uh, also another good looker, if you've seen some of these pictures. Uh, yes. She didn't hit me with her hand, but she hit, took me the broom after me. I used to hide under the bed and she'd come with the broom. <laughs> but, uh, she was the only one that left LaSalle and moved up to Chicago because my dad's had brothers in Chicago. He said he could make more money up there. So she was very unhappy. She didn't want to leave her family. She really didn't want to. But she did. There were six of us, and I'm the only one left. The other ones are all right. She was funny. My dad and her together were funny. If you <laughs> write a book about them, they were really funny. Ask my nephew. <laughs> That's my brother, my oldest brother, John's son. Thank you. Affectionately known as Johnny. They had a player piano. Like Johnny's player. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. And yes, I remember yeah, that. Remember they just had a player piano. They had every opera. Her father was that's an opera writer. Yeah. Under the sun on that yes, player. So that's piano. what I remember. Right. And also, I want to tell you about Josephine was closest to my dad, and my dad became a prize fighter when he was 16. And he, and Josephine, you know, that was his favorite sister. And he used to tell me that she used to be his sparring partner. So, <laughs> see, she got a practice. <laughs> <laughs> Norma, you want to tell about Terry? No, I'd like to say my sister, she oh. knows all the stories. So she's I just, actually, we always say, her mother and my father. <laughs> <laughs> I was the English one. Yeah, she, she was the Italian one. She was the Italian one. Well, I'm sure Norma will have some stories too, but uh, one of the things that really uh, impressed me about my dad was he noticed that he had all copies there that he was going to stay for. <laughs> and I also have a book there of his life. My father, our father, had a very deadly ego. He never, he kept pictures, but they were in a, a, in a book with higgledy-piggledy. I mean, he'd be there in Siberia, and next to him would be normal as a baby. It made no sense. So I had to rip all these out to try to make sense of it. Um, he came over as Salvador Martini. He never told me or shared with me, as well as I know, and my mother did you that his name was Salvador because he became Terrence Martin when he went and started doing boxing. He was a professional boxer at the age of 16. I think he probably decided that was better than working in the mines or whatever. It was a way out. And I think he actually might have even gone up to Chicago and stayed with Josephine at that time. I'm not sure because I'm not sure the age differences. But he. Um, as I said, became Terrence Martin. I happenstance named my middle daughter Sally, and he never ever told me. You know, my name is Mary Salvador, <laughs> which of course the nickname in the Sally is so Sally. <laughs> but um, my dad loved his Italian family. He, uh, I loved them. I, my mother was welcome. This was at a time when. You know, Protestant white <laughs> girls, farm girls, would have been maybe not welcomed into an Italian family, but they welcomed her totally. And I don't think her family welcomed her. Yeah. Well, they didn't welcome her. anybody. I think, I think, <laughs> I think our sisters did. I think, but no, <laughs> but he never welcomed anybody. So. <laughs> 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 
this was my family because I grew up in Moselle. And Aunt Frances actually nursed me to babysat. You know, my cousin Marie and I were about the same age. Made no difference. I loved her. I loved her kitchen. Uh, I wish she had, I, I mean, every time I smell that smell, I'm back in that kitchen. Um, Marie, uh, your sister, was my very, one of my very closest friends. And cousin uh, Shirley, too. Shirley was an Irma's age. Oh, more than yes. She was an Irma's age. And yeah. we weren't best friends. We were best enemies. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Now you're going to tell. Yeah, well, we, we didn't need an enemy, and we were out of family because we all think that we were. All the old existers. No, no, all of Carrie's advocation. Oh, God. Well, Bryce Hyder, number one. Uh, he uh, joined me, went into the army, and you've got to become a citizen when you went into the army. My uncle, uh, Tony, did the same. And Tony, by the way, even when he was really old, would like to talk French to me, because he'd been in France during World War I. My father was sent to Siberia, the Siberian Expedition, which is an amazing page of our history that a lot of people would like to cover up. Uh, at any rate, I have pictures in there of him when he went to Siberia. And because we have postcards from Hawaii and Japan, it's because he went from California to Hawaii to Japan to Vladivostok. And they were there, supposedly, to keep the railroads up and defeat the, the um, troops down in um, uh, Europe during World War I. Not sure. He always felt they were there to watch, to watch the Japanese because they didn't want the Japanese to come in. And when Pearl Harbor hit, he had already been going around in the American Legion things and so forth, telling people, watch out for the Japanese. Mm -hmm. So, um, but after that, he came back and he was one of the original state policemen. And that was back in the days of Elliot Mills, um, bootlegging days. Um, and he uh, went from there to become justice of the peace, then ran for a peace magistrate. Apparently, Gene had a hard time getting paid for her father's justice. I did. I did. <laughs> this man wasn't, he wasn't as tall as George. Everybody was afraid of him. Everybody, everybody was terrified of him. Uh, and then we went to, he went to Star Drop. He, he was, uh, got a political appointment. I should sure have. My father became a work publican. Let me tell you why. Because he came back into service and somebody by the name of Mike Charlie gave him a job as a hood and mouth inspector. He needed to do a swap about with mouth disease. Not only that, he took a horse into the backyard. And Joey was special to so many, many people. Um, gee, what else? They're talking about being spanked by parents. My mother spanked me twice. My father never laid a hand. My mother spanked me every day for a month. <laughs> <laughs> my father slapped my face once. I was too drunk to remember. <laughs> I was a good one. <laughs> it came seven years later. They were tired. <laughs> but anyhow, I did have a. I loved Star Rock. That was my my place and uh, but I haven't lived in uh, the South Peru area since uh, I was in college so it's wonderful to come back and see all you people and to talk to you all on Facebook I love it thank you
Yeah. Tell us your story about your grandma. Well, this is really about my grandpa. Oh, grandpa. Yeah. Grandpa DeLuca used to listen to the opera all the time. And in the house in Forest Park, they used to have a closed porch. And that's where Uncle Peter slept. And after he left, he had it made into a music room. And the music room was right next to Aunt Fran's bedroom. So one night, he was in there. He was playing the opera very loud. Cavalleria Rusticana, his favorite. And he was listening to the intermezzo, the most famous part of that opera. And Aunt Fran said, Pa, could you turn it down? I gotta go to work tomorrow. He didn't answer. She said, Pa, could you? She went and knocked on the door. She walks in, she says, he says to her, Can't you see him crying? What do you want? <laughs> It's a great story. I love it. Yeah.